Okay. I call the meeting to order at 4.38. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, Mary. Yep. Susan Seltzer. Yep. Thomas O'Brien. Here. Matthew Buckley. Here. Michelle Kaiser. Oh. Here. Yukon Lee. Here. Aaron Nowak. Here. Barbara McInerney. Here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, may I have a motion to uh, approve the agenda as presented? A motion, please. I'll make a motion. Thank you, Barbara. Second, Yukon. All in favor of approving the agenda? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 6-0. We are going to move into um, a school reopening discussion. This has come up. And I'm so sorry, but uh, you said 6-0. Did someone? I oh, I'm sorry, 7-0. No, you're right. Okay. I forgot your mom is back. That's fine. Not trying to correct you. Just, no. Make sure no. No. Okay. Motion carried 7 0. Thank you for correcting me. Okay, I lost we are picture. moving in. Mm -hmm. What? Uh, this is Jack. I lost picture for a minute for some reason. Okay. Uh, we are going to move into a reopening discussion. Um, the issue, Sarah, would you like to explain, is due to our MERV 13 filters not being available. Yep, hold on one second. Um, Just to remind everybody, if you're not a board member, if you could please mute your microphones because it interferes. Yeah. Somebody, all right, I'm going to have to go through whoever it is. So just give me a second. I got it. Do you ever, oh, there's one. Uh, Nina, can you mute? Can everyone please mute unless you are the speaker at the time, please? Board members included, just to keep down the background noise. Jack, could you mute, please? Sure. Okay. Let's try that. Share screen. Okay. All right, so just uh, a very quick one-line summary of the issue that we're facing. We received word uh, late yesterday that the MERV 13 filters for the classrooms um, are not in uh, and will be, uh, despite assurances to the contrary, uh, several times the last few weeks, and that the filters will be in by mid-September. Uh, so last night I reached out to some colleagues uh, to see uh, if they had any assistance they could offer and uh, one of my colleagues put me in touch with Jack Eisenbach who is an engineer that works uh, directly with which HVAC and uh, in fact has advised New York State Education Department on the guidance regarding COVID and reopening. Uh, his uh, recommendation for us is that we can open and what that we would be able to do so by having 100% outside air. So turning all of our unit ventilating units to 100% uh, 
outside air, meaning that no air would get circulated back in the room. And for anyone that's been in on any of our presentations in the last uh, couple of months, you'll know that we talked about the air exchanging every 10 minutes. It was six times per hour. It would be a completely new set of fresh air. Uh, with this setting that we'd put in, that it would be 100% fresh air all the time. No air would get recycled back into the room. Um, so he is here today to speak to us and share a little bit about his professional thoughts on MERV 13 filters, uh, respiratory droplets, respiratory droplet sizes, et cetera, and to uh, give the, the board some advice specifically related to MERV filter filtration systems in the classrooms. So Jack, I turn it over to you. Uh, at this time, and then board members, you can ask questions um, of Jack. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> we've been working with your neighbor, uh, Warwick Valley, for many years uh, on a number of projects, but we've been working very closely with SED on the whole COVID response for a number of my clients. Um, and the thing about MERV 13 filters, most air handling equipment originally was designed to handle MERV 7 to MERV 10 filters. And very rarely do you get MERV 10s on even modern equipment. Equipment, uh, give you an idea, the, um, we replaced all the air handling units at Warwick Middle School 10 years ago, and all the filters are MERV 7. Now, the thing about uh, filtering is that, uh, and I gave the superintendent, uh, Sarah, a, a memo we put together and it went to Dan Lim at SED, who, he's the head engineer at SED, <clears throat> about the different kinds of filters and the effectiveness of the different kinds of filters. Um, COVID droplets, which COVID-19 droplets, I have to be careful because um, for just for clarification, SARS was a COVID, um, but it was uh, COVID-8. Um, so it, we use it, but COVID-19 means it was found in 2019 um, for clarification. The droplets, which is what comes out of our mouth or nose, have a size of about five microns. Uh, the pore size on a MERV 7 filter is three microns. So even the old filters you had would stop most droplets uh, because the virus is embedded in the droplet and it'll get caught in the filter because the pore is smaller than the droplet. The difficulty is related to the airborne virus, it's particles itself, not embedded in the droplets. And so those um, have a size anywhere from 0.06 to 0.14 microns. So obviously they would go right through a MERV-7 filter with a three micron hole. However, a MERV-13 filter still has a pore size of 0.3 microns. So the COVID-19 bacteria, or not bacteria, but virus particles will go through a MERV-13 filter. It will not stop it. It will slow it down some maybe, but it will not stop COVID-19 uh, particles. Um, and so we have not recommended putting in the MERV-13 filters for any of my clients for a number of reasons. One is it increases the static air pressure, so it's harder to get the equipment to produce as much air. Um, and the other part is that the motors in the equipment aren't designed for that increased static pressure to maintain the same flow of air. Um, and what I told the superintendent last night was the simplest answer right now is put all of your equipment in what's called economizer mode the air temperature outside is warm enough that you could operate without having the filter in effect on any of the equipment, whether it's a rooftop unit or an air handling unit, you put it on 100% outside air. So you're bringing in air, and as long as it's com fairly comfortable outside, it's not an issue. If it gets cold, you can still turn the heat on 
much earlier than you normally would and heat the air coming in from outside. So, I mean, it will increase your cost because because of energy, um, but you could operate with 100% outside air um, and for quite a while. Um, it'd be very tough to do that in the midwinter, but right now it would be simple to do. And from what I understand, all of your mechanical equipment is on what we call a direct digital control or computerized control system. So from a central computer, you could turn the um, outside air dampers to 100% outside air without having to go to each piece of equipment and do anything. Yes, and uh, Mr. Porras did do that this morning for us. Okay. So if you're operating with 100% outside air, you're not recirculating. Even with the unit ventilators, then what happens is you're bringing in a lot of outside air and then it's relieving to the roof through the relief system that is put in with the unit ventilator system. So basically you're bringing in the air and you're exhausting it through the roof uh, for all intents and purposes. Um, with the larger units, you are bringing in the air and um, when it re if it returns to the unit, it gets exhausted out, but 100% of the air going through and into the building is outside air. Um, and my understanding is most of your, your equipment basically is in good shape, so it should function without a real problem to do that. Um, the, um, so what we have is if you can't get the filters and you wanna put the filters in, operate with, um, 100% outside air until you get the filters, which may, which would come, let's say, at the end of September. But by the end of September, you're still not necessarily gonna be in heating mode, so it shouldn't be a real problem. If you're gonna get a cold day, let's say uh, September 20th, and you haven't gotten the filters yet, and you want the filters, um, turn the heat on in the morning, get the room warm. Um, so that when the kids come in, it's warm, it may cool down during the day when you're on 100% outside air, but the heating coil, if it's 50 degrees outside, the heating coil in the unit vents and the air handling units should be able to maintain temperature in the room, even with 100% outside air. <coughs> uh, I wouldn't want to do that in November or December when it's 30 degrees or 20 degrees outside, but right now that shouldn't be a real problem. Jack, we had a, uh, please pardon the interruption, I'm sorry for this. We oh, had, uh, I, I had a, you and I spoke last night at length and, and thank you again for your time last night. Um, we had a suggestion today about getting a, a, trying to get a roll of MERV 13 filters and then cutting them. Um, is that a possibility? I, I, know, I know you said very clearly that the MERV 13 doesn't trap any more than the MERV 8 if it's trapped in the, inside the respiratory droplet, and in fact is still not enough to, if it's just the COVID particle itself. Um, but it, it, if it is hanging on MERV-13, can filters be cut to be put into, or is that not recommended? It can't be in a, a unit ventilator. It comes with a, a border on it that's cardboard or another material to make it rigid. If you have cut material, what is, what is gonna hold it so it maintains its shape? Even in your large air handling units, the rack that holds it is not designed for a roll filter. And many years ago, that was very common. Um, but most of them now have a series of two by two, three by three filters to make up the wall of the filter. It depends on the size of the unit, the amount of air. Um, okay. And so, so, one so last thing. Right. If I can, yeah. you have to remember MERV 13 filters come anywhere in thickness from one inch thick to six inches thick. So you get beyond uh, a one inch filter at which we, you would use in a unit ventilator. Uh, you really can't bend something that's two to six inches thick. Right. Thank you very much. I just, I just wanted to make sure, just see and, and take that off the table if that wasn't a possibility. Um, but you are saying that by doing 100% outside air and no recycled air, 
um, and then using that heating system that you're talking about if we get a cold day um, between now and when they um, when, when, between now and when we get the filters the the heating option as it yes is. yes okay I'm sorry to interrupt and I just I just wanted to just I'd rather you all interrupt any of you interrupt and ask questions as we go. Um, okay, I, I have a question. Does each classroom uh, vent through the roof um, individually? Does, does Rob on here? It, I can't answer that without going through the Yeah, I was, I was looking to see if Rob was on here. Um, Sarah, is Rob available? I'm here. Thank you, Rob. Um, um, does, does each classroom vent through the roof? Each classroom does, but not individually. We have, uh, not every classroom has its, uh, dedicated exhaust fan. It's usually for a group of classrooms. Normally okay. with, normally with unit ventilators, a whole group of classroom vents to one spot and then have one vent and it's not always even a fan it it uh, can be just gravity relief but, um, I am a little bit of um, taken back by some of this information because uh, I've, I've done some research on the MERV 13 I am NOT an expert so um, but what you're saying presents a completely different picture than a lot of the um, research that's out there. Um, we went with MERS 13 filters to filter out not only COVID, but flu and viruses and everything else. Um, flu season is about to be on us and very easily a child could have the flu and be mistaken for, you know, we have to treat everyone as COVID. So um, that that's one statement. And then we're no longer exchanging the air. There's just air coming in from outside. What does that do for students with asthma, allergies, et cetera? Um, that it's it's like basically opening a window if I'm not under if I'm understanding this correctly. It, it's like the same idea. It's just pulling it in. Can and you speak about that, off, please? Just to build up for that, also, if this is a thing where we could use 100% of the outside air, why wouldn't we be doing that? all the time during the temperatures that are susceptible, that are acceptable for the unit to work properly. Why would we need a filter in the, uh, in the first place? Um, okay, let me see if I can answer all three questions. Okay. Um, one thing to understand when you mentioned about flu particles um, versus COVID-19 particles, flu particles are much larger than COVID-19 particles. And a, a MERV-13 filter would definitely stop uh, flu particles. They're just bigger. Um, and so that would work very well for that kind of material, for that kind of uh, particle. It would not work, it doesn't work with the COVID because of the size of the particle. Um, I was under the impression when I, you know, just general, you know, uh, layman's research is that it doesn't filter it out 100%, but it does, um, it is able to filter out some forms of it and slow it down, perhaps. It's not, it doesn't not filter it out. Is that what you're saying? It doesn't filter it out at all and we just are wasting our time? Um, okay, it, it will not, it, it will stop some because some will hit it's like anything else, it'll hit the, the non-poor location of the filter. It, the MERV-13 filters, and again, I don't know what TRAIN did to increase the, the flow or the capacity of the fans, but if I take a unit that was designed for a MERV-7 filter and put a MERV-13 filter, I will reduce the airflow through that filter by a huge percentage. Um, unless I increase the capacity of the of the fan motor, um, so it will it will stop some, but it will not it will not stop. You'd have to go to a MERS 16, 17, or a HEPA filter to stop 100% of the COVID uh, particles. 
uh, and that's not feasible with any equipment unless it's designed specifically for that piece for that type of filter and you would only see it not even in hospitals uh, they use that in operating rooms intensive care isolation spaces they don't even use it in general patient spaces because of the cost right. of operating. Um, um, I just I just don't want to um, put out to our community that uh, the MERV 13 is is not going to help at all because um, it's one, you know, it, it, yes, you're an expert, but it's, there's always two sides to every story. And um, there is enough research to say that MERV-13 filters are um, very effective in this setting um, with children. So I, somebody else ask some questions, please. Okay, I was asked another question, why we don't operate with 100% outside air all the time. And at this time of year, uh, again, most people, most schools, a typical unit ventilator operates with 500 CFM of fresh air per, um, per minute. Uh, and that's based on the old code, unless the unit ventilator is brand new. Um, newer ones use less fresh air. Um, but the, what they have considered, 500 CFM is based on a typical 700 and 70 square foot classroom with 30 kids in it. You're gonna have about 15 and you still, even under normal operation, would get 500, 450 to 500 CFM of fresh air, even without operating on 100% outside air. And um, the, um, which with 15 people is 30 CFM per person whereas you're only required by the code in place now to have 10. And what the teachers union is asking for is 17. So you would be exceeding the amount of fresh air in the space, even operating under normal circumstances. We do operate, we, in most equipment under, with a, a direct digital control system, they do have what's called economizer mode when it's a good temperature outside and the temperature and the equipment is normally set to go to 100% outside air if the temperature is over like 60. So what does that do for the kids with asthma and allergies and everything like that? I'm, not, I'm just not understanding why we would use the filters in the first place during the months where it's an acceptable temperature to have 100% airflow or outside air. Um, I don't understand why we would have a set MERV rating through Department of Health or whatever it is that sets that. Um, why we would have to have a particular MERV rating on our filters if we didn't need to have that, if you understand what I'm asking. Well, the filters typically in equipment are designed to make sure the air coming into the building is not uh, full of pollen, full of uh, dirt, and stuff like that. In answer to your question, I really, I'm not a doctor to know what a kid who's got specific allergies would uh, do, but even if you have it operating under normal circumstances without 100% outside air, is that child gonna react? Uh, or, the, or forget child, is anyone who has allergies going to react, whether it's a staff member or a, a student, uh, going to react with breathing outside air. Uh, I, you know, if someone reacts to very quickly to being outside with outside air, then they would react if you go to 100% outside air inside the building. Yes, and that I can't assess. Now you could always do it where if you have one, one or two or five rooms where there are students that have those kinds of allergies, reduce the amount of fresh air to code compliant in those rooms. Even if you bring it down to 300 CFM from 100% outside air, that exceeds what the unions are asking for, and it still, and it reduces the amount of pollen or other things that someone with allergies might react to. And you can do that on a room by room basis. So if you have students in a particular room or a few rooms that are gonna be very sensitive, then you can always adjust those rooms. 
And uh, are we um, going to be against any Department of Health standards by having 100% unfiltered air? No. The Department of Health and SED do not require you to have uh, filtered air. In fact, New York State Education Department says you're supposed to have the equipment that can be either natural ventilation or mechanical ventilation. Uh, so, and in one of my clients, they have four schools where there is no mechanical ventilation and they are just going to be opening the windows even in winter time. That's all they can do. Um, I have a question going back to uh, what you said earlier. Um, you said something about the expense of the operation and the MERV filters um, as a reason why MERV 13 filters are not an option. Is it an expense issue or is it um, a health issue? that we would opt for MERV filters or both? Okay, all filters are called MERV. So it's MERV 7 versus a MERV 13. Uh, we had MERV 8 currently. That's what we are replacing, going from MERV 8 to MERV 13. We were already at 8. Okay, typical equipment in the old days up till now had either between MERV 7 and MERV 10. Um, and that was the range that you would see in a school. So it motivates right in the middle. Um, and the higher the number, the smaller the pore size uh, that works. Um, and what I was saying, I think what I was saying was, if you increase the density of the filter, then you get, it's hard, you have to get more pressure to push air through that filter. And um, a lot of the equipment, uh, in order to do that, you would have to upgrade the motors, uh, um, at least change the shivs, change the fan belts if well, you can. Just to stop you right there, we were told by train that we could absolutely do the upgraded filter. We weren't given any reason why that our, our equipment could not handle it. Um, I, I will so, use your equipment. Yeah. So we have someone from train here on the call. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. Um, that's just, I just want to see if he's here. Can we get him on to speak about our equipment, please? I'm, I'm yep. Good afternoon. Scott Miller here. Hey, Scott. Hi, Scott. Hi, can everyone hear Go me? Go ahead, Sarah. Yep. So Scott, do you just want to try and answer that question about the, um, our, our system? Sh sure. Uh, as best I can. So uh, obviously we talked a lot about technology and, and MERV rating um, and per SCD, ASHRAE and CDC's recommendations, uh, we had ordered the MERV 13 ratings for a number of the HVAC equipment there. Uh, I believe all the HVAC equipment. We are assessing the, each and every one of those applications to evaluate exactly what Jack was referring to to make sure that the equipment will be able to handle the MERV 13 rating. Our understanding at this point is that majority of the equipment uh, is able to do that. There will be an increase in uh, resistance and therefore motor consumption. And there will also be a probably overall reduction in, in, in CFM or airflow. Um, we had not evaluated using 100% outside air. Uh, that is a, a twist. Our recommendation was going to be increasing the amount of outside air. We had not necessarily considered going to 100% outside air. I don't think it's a bad idea. That's it's probably a good idea. The only consideration would be, again, what Jack had referred to in terms of the comfort uh, level at that point. By introducing 100% outside air, you're going to be able to condition that air adequately enough to maintain uh, temperature and humidity in the spaces for the teacher and the students. I want to clarify one thing. Um, SVD, if you talk with Dan Lim, is not recommending MERV 13 filters. They're allowing MERV 13 filters, but they're not recommending it. And that came from Dan Lim, who's the head engineer. Uh, so let's clear. Yeah, I've got, a, I've got a recommendation from SED that does suggest the use it's of MERV 13 filtration. So whether or not Dan has a different opinion on this specifically, right. we do have recommendations from SED that, that specifically discuss the use of MERV 13. 
just yeah. to stop right there for one second is this is absolutely two different um, trade professionals with two different opinions at that moment. So I don't want our community to think that we are saying one thing doesn't work or one thing does. The purpose of this meeting is to keep the community informed. There was a setback. Our plan would need to be changed in order to move forward. There, there are, it's not about not opening school. It's not about stopping anything, but it is about transparency to you guys. We have worked really hard to be the transparent board all along. So that's what it is. It's, it's just everybody, you know, take a, take a pause, take a deep breath and let's work through um, how to handle the situation. Nobody wants kids to not go to school. That that's not where we're at. So just, Give us, a, give us a little bit of time to work through these things. And that's the purpose of if you go to the 100% outside area, you buy the month of September, effectively. Um, yeah. Just in, in that term, so me personally, when you say you buy a month, um, I am a little bit uncomfortable with that type of terminology of buying a month. Um, it's my personal opinion. I'm... I, spoke about masks earlier on when we did it with not having masks on children and not having filters and not having air exchange it does make me question the safety of our not only our students but our staff um we are a board of seven that's not the issue right now but i'm just saying when we use things like buying a month that's a term i'm uncomfortable with well, i'm just saying that in terms of being able to get the filters if you want the filters and you can't get them till the second or third week of, of September by going to hundred percent outside air, you don't, you're not, uh, the filters are not an issue because you're bringing in outside air and, uh, and you're using the outside air, of, uh, uh, universally. Um, and, uh, so that, that's, okay. Thank um, you so much. Can we go back to that? Let's let Scott talk a little bit more about, let's make sure, you know, Scott's on board that our equipment can handle this. And um, do you have a timeline on those filters for us, Scott? Yeah, let's ask Scott a question too, if you could possibly answer it throughout. If we go to 100% outside air, what does that do for the humidity levels and condensations on the pipes and the ceilings and, you know, humidity issues that we already have? that is kept under control by having the uh, air conditioning running? I, th I think it's, it's going to be dependent 100% on what the outside air temperature and humidity is. So, I mean, if it's 95 degrees, the end of September, 100% outside air may be difficult to do under those conditions. Um, also, Scott, what does this do? Because typically we don't, we don't, because with our system, have 100% outside air. We don't have windows open. It is something that's not recommended with our system. Um, I've heard that over and over over the years. What will it, will it have any damage to our system? Um, I know it'll cause the condensation issues we see. Can you elaborate yeah, I, on that? I, I think what I said before, you know, it's really going to be dependent upon the outside air temperature and humidity as to how effective we'll be able to do that and keep the, you know, the students and the teachers comfortable. I, I think generally speaking, September is, is relatively cool. One of the things that we're doing at other K through 12 schools is more of a purge cycle versus a 24 uh, seven, hundred percent outside day or so two hours before school begins, we would introduce a purge cycle where we're opening everything up, all the dampers and running motors up to hundred percent if they have VFDs and all the exhaust fans and doing, um, trying to get as much fresh air in there and as much stale air out. And we're doing the same thing at the end of school. So after all the kids are gone, we're doing the same thing where we're opening everything up and kind of doing a blast of fresh air through the system, um, trying to get as much fresh air in and old air out. So that's just a different strategy that we're utilizing at other school districts that made them feel a little bit more comfortable maybe. That's in place of the MERV 13, Scott? No, in, in conjunction with MERV 13 filters. But if we don't have the MERV 13, that's when the 100% the is what allows for air to never be recycled back. No, 
you know, he's he's saying that if you open up the units to 100% outside air, that you're not getting any recirculated air. Right. MERV 13 filters or MERV 8 is is irregardless of, of that strategy. That strategy works with either type of filter. Right. Okay. Uh, what, Scott, what, are your, what is your downfalls that you see to using 100% outside air? Outside air. Um, I guess fairly minimum. Again, it can, it's going to be depend on the temperature. Um, so comfort may become an issue trying to maintain temperature in the area. And the other thing that really we haven't talked about is, is noise. Usually what the teachers and students complain about is is the air noise coming off a unit ventilator. So there may be an increased noise potential issue. Uh, I know a lot of the units do have the ECM motors, which are a little bit quieter and have the ability to vary speed. Um, so that's less of an issue, but that could be um, something that people complain about. Well, if you're gonna complain about the noise, if the teacher turns off the unit ventilator because they don't like the noise in their room, Exactly. A MERV 8, a MERV 13, or you have 100% outside air, it's still not going to provide any uh, filtering of the air in the room. Are we able to have, our teachers aren't able to turn off the units, correct? Rob? They can't teachers turn don't... off the tanks. They, no, they can usually adjust the temperature of the room, but they cannot adjust the fan speed. Okay. Um, Scott, just a different question. Um, do we have like MERV 11 filters available that we could put in in the meantime to eliminate the 100% outside air? And is it something that is available? Um, no, in general, uh, across the board, this has caused a raw material supply issue. So our suppliers of filters are struggling to get anything that's higher than a standard MERV 7 or 8 rating. Um, and even MERV 7 and 8 uh, filters are being delayed longer than we've ever seen, in, at least in my tenure at TRAIN. So it, across the board, it's a, a raw material type of um, chain issue where the, the, the suppliers are not getting the raw materials they need to make the, the filters is what I'm hearing. Okay. So we just have a guesstimate that they're going to be here in two to three weeks and this could go on for two to three months. And, and then we do have a different issue with heating um, because it's one thing the kids, you know, it's okay to pot, you know, have a, a room that's warm, but it's not okay to have rooms that are cold. And I believe we actually have department of health um, guidelines for a minimum temperature. Uh, I'm just throwing that out there to the rest of the board is this may not be a fix in two weeks. Well, there, the idea with hundred percent outside air is to try and get by without having to turn the heat on. Even with hundred percent outside air, if the temperature outside is 45 degrees, let's say, and it's uncomfortable, you can turn the heat on and you can run that heat through the unit ventilators. Uh, then it's just a matter of money to run the heat when normally you wouldn't. Um, and you're heating a lot more air that is cold as opposed to when you're uh, heating three, four, five hundred CFM of air. Um, I, I would like to ask with, if I take one of those units, let's say a unit ventilator and I put a MERV 13 filter on it, how much is that gonna reduce the f airflow through that unit? without changing the motor, without changing the fan speed, there is an increase in resistance. And depending on whether there's a tightness around the filter uh, or if it's loose, like I see in a lot of unit ventilators, um, how much is that gonna reduce the fresh air and is the air gonna go through the filter or around the filter? Yeah, great. Great question, Jack, that we've been contemplating as well. And it's really on a case by case basis. And it's based on the equipment and the age, as you suggested, type of motor that's in it. Um, and maybe the overall condition of the, of the unit itself and whether or not the outside air dampers are working properly. So there's a lot of things that we're considering as we're going through each unit. Um, we're going through the units and, and evaluating this exact 
scenario that you just described. On top of that, we're also disinfecting uh, the evaporator coils where they have, you know, DX cooling um, and just doing a, a, as good a job as we can to overall disinfect the unit and clean it up um, before we put it back together. But we're, we're that's on a case by case basis. So I don't think there's a real rule of thumb or anything we can say definitively that exactly what the CFM reduction will be. Uh, it would be a general rule of thumb or a case by case per type of equipment, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Actually, you may want to contact uh, Yonkers schools, put it in one school, and then decided not to do it in any other school with their unit ventilators. They put in MERV 13 filters in a unit, in a unit ventilator in one building. Yeah, I don't know if I have a contact there, but we'd be happy to work with you on that. If you want to call me in the morning, I can give you a contact name. Great, thank you. Um, so just, I want to say we do, and Rob, can you please confirm this? Cause I'm going to, um, throw this out there and you're in another room, but I just want to confirm, we have plenty of MERV eight filters to go we, in all of these systems. Is that correct? We have enough to do a complete, uh, filter change. We always keep a back stock to do one full change. Thanks, Sarah, for that, because I, I wouldn't want to see no filters in. Um, that, that goes backwards from where we started working. I agree with that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the other thing I, I want to mention with the, uh, um, with the filters, and Scott, if you want to inter interrupt with that, what I've also read is, whereas you change the MERV 8, filter once or twice a year, uh, you could be in a position changing the MERV 13 once a month. And they're much more expensive filters, usually about 80% more expensive than a MERV 8 filter. We we were advised of the cost and the, and the time frame of what needed to be done when the decision was made. Um, and the board moved forward with that as a as a good um, as a good thing. And I, I don't think we need to go back to revisit the, the MERV 13 choices at all. Um, the simple fact that it filters out flu is a bonus, but any other board members want to speak to that? Go right ahead. Yeah, I yeah, mean, I, I, have a question, I have a question. Michelle. Yeah. I'll, I'll let um, Scott speak first. It's, it's Matt. It's, go ahead. Oh, it's, I'm sorry. It, it, Matt, it, both of you started to talk at once. Matt, you want to go first? Michelle, you go first. Yeah, hey, Michelle, I you're up. just kind of going to, I just want to thank you, Jack, for coming on, um, you know, the Zoom call with us. So great information that you're sharing. So thank you very much. I was a little under the impression that it was filtering, um, the MERV 13 was filtering a lot more than the MERV 8 filters. Um, so I am questioning kind of moving ahead with the MERV 13 because of the cost. I mean, is it? Let me clarify. It, it, the MERV 13 will filter more. The MERV 8 filter has a pore size of three microns, whereas the MERV um, 13 has a pore size of 0.3 microns. So the MERV 13 will filter more material than a MERV 8 filter. The higher the number, the smaller the pore size. Um, so, yes, it does filter more, but it won't stop all the, the COVID-19 is a very small particle. Um, and it won't stop, it'll stop some, but it won't stop all the, the MERV, uh, the COVID-19 uh, particles. Thank you. Was it Matt who wanted to ask a question? Yes, thank, thank you for everything, Jack, today. Um, how many school districts do you know of have MERV 13 installed and plan on installing for COVID? None of my clients are putting in MERV 13 filters. Um, the expense and the, and the concern about the ability of the equipment to handle it is the reason we've I've, I've not recommended it. 
Warwick Valley, we're not putting MERV 13 filters. We're making sure all the equipment, all their equipment works to bring in fresh air. And they are making sure all that equipment works and the filters are clean. The one other thing they're doing is putting what's called UVC lights in the nurse's office and the isolation rooms to disinfect the rooms. Uh, I know that there are other districts that maybe Jack doesn't work with, but there are other districts, and um, Scott may know this from clients he has, that are working um, at putting MERV 13s in um, that were not uh, readily available as we've run into. Maybe Julie has uh, some information on that for us. It's true there are some districts that are looking to use MERV-13 filters, having analyzed their mechanical systems and understanding that it does cause additional pressure on the system because it allows less air and you have to push harder to get the air through because of the smaller particulates that it covers against. But there are um, there is a shortage that has caused a delay in the MERV-13 filters that is not unique to your district. Um, and I just want to interrupt for just, and I apologize, but I just wanted to show for so that the people on the call know Julie Shaw is our district yes. legal counsel. Um, so we have uh, Jack. Thanks, Arthur. Sarah. Well, that's okay. I just wanted to show just in case anyone says who's Julie. Um, she's not a community member that you know that, or you know she is our legal. We have Jack Eisenbach as an engineer. We have Train as our manufacturer on the call, and then we have Julie Shaw on as our legal counsel. So I just wanted to throw that in. Thanks, sir. So between Jack and the train guy, we could get an estimate for the strain on the units and the motors, like a cost between a 13 and an eight, and if it's cost effective going forward. Well, right. I gathered that that's been evaluated previously. Um, if uh, Susan, because uh, Susan said that you were uh, aware of the difference in cost and the amount of time you have to change the number of filter changes that get involved. So if you knew if that was involved in the decision and the decision was made to go to that, then that's already been evaluated. Uh, I gather um, from the author he hasn't evaluated each piece of equipment yet. I believe Scott's been in district for, uh, Train's been in district for a few days now, evaluating our, our equipment. Um, but um, I, I do want to know. Sue, can we let Scott answer what? that, please? Scott? Sure. Sorry, Hello? I was on mute there. Um, so I, I think the question was, is our, our MERV 13 built? there's applicable for the equipment at the schools, the two schools? Yep. The question. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So uh, we are in the process of evaluating that. Our understanding is that the equipment that's there uh, is, is capable of running with MERV 13, albeit it'll be um, at potentially higher pressure drops. Um, but MERV 13 filters are capable of capturing up to 85% of particles, 0.3 to 1 oh, microns in size. So it's, um, again, that's the reason that we initially looked at that technology, but as we're going through each piece of equipment, there may be equipment that may have failing motors or failing dampers or, um, in a condition where it might not be able to handle that. And on a case by case basis, we're going to make a recommendation to either continue with the MERV 13 or go back to a MERV 8, depending on, you know, the equipment status and the, uh, overall machine condition, depending on our initial our assessment that we're going through right now as we speak. Um, Scott, would so, failing motors so, and stop. dampers and things be routinely, um, now that you're doing a complete system check, would be replaced at this point anyway? Is that something, do we wait until they completely stop working? I, I think our How recommendation does that, as, as we're going through them would be to replace any defective items or deficient items that we see as we're going through the assessment. Thank you. Um, Jack, can you tell me with the districts that you're working with, what you're, you've been recommending for your districts as far as um, your priority? Is it financial based? And then what is your health uh, choices? That, you know, what is your recommendation to your districts you work with? Well, part of it is financial. 
and I'll use an example. Um, Yonkers schools, a huge percentage of their equipment doesn't even work. So you can't, I mean, we're talking just to get some of the equipment working, they're spending about $3 million. Um, so they looked at and they put MERV 13 filters in one of the schools and their equipment could not handle it and air, enough air through them to meet uh, the code. Uh, so they, they're not doing that. Um, okay, um, just want to point out though that our, our equipment isn't, doesn't take $3 million to service it and we're in a lot better shape than that I'd like to think. We do pride ourselves yeah. on keeping everything in tip top shape. Um, I understand that. So and we're with next door. Um, we went through and they checked every piece of equipment and any piece of equipment that was not working properly or have enough fresh air. We have fixed it. They have spent a lot of money. There were five rooms where there were problems in the high school. Uh, obviously, Pine Island, they reopened so they could have more space um, for kindergarten. Um, and we had to do some work in that building to get that building up and running. And the, in that case, the nurse's office didn't have any fresh air. And uh, the isolation, the room they're using for an isolation room didn't have any fresh air. So we had to get air into there. Uh, that would work year round in meet code. But we are not changing the filters on the rest of the equipment to MERV 13s. Uh, Scott mentioned that yes, the, the poor size, the MERV 13s will stop things down to 0.3 microns. But when the particle size for um, COVID is 0.06 to 0.14, it's smaller than the pore size. So that's why we do not we do not recommend it. We have not recommended it for uh, Mount Vernon. Uh, we have not recommended it for any of our clients at this point. Thank you. Can I ask Scott, how old is our system compared to other school districts? Because we have a relatively newer system, right? Yeah, majority of the equipment is has been replaced in both facilities. There are some older equipment. Um, I don't know the age of each, so I'm not gonna claim to know the exact uh, number of years of operation of each of each school district, but there was equipment replaced in pieces over the past, within the past decade. So less than seven years old, eight years old maybe. Um, I have a question to Julie. Um, on the guidance on the SED, not not so much guidance, but their um, coulds, not musts, but coulds and shoulds. Um, what is the, I've heard two conflicting things from Scott and Jack. What is your uh, opinion on the MERV 13s out of SED and Department of Health? I'm more concerned about Department of Health. So in the actual written guidance, I don't think that they specify a specific MERV filter rating level. Um, the ASHRAE is the organization, A-S-H-R-A-E, that on their website specifies MERV 13. I know this because when I'm at um, bargaining with different units, the NYSET people always tell me and refer back to the ASHRAE website's recommendation for the MERV 13 filter. Um, I, I don't know about the long-term impact on your mechanical systems or your ventilation, because that's not my area of expertise, but th this is what is commonly pointed to by those people that I sit across the table from. And, and, and who, uh, maybe Thanks, Jack Julie. can answer this. What, what is ASH right? Because I'm not familiar with that. We have everything that we've been developing has been with uh, NYSED and the Department of Health. Um, which, which you're right, Julie, it, it doesn't say more of 13 anywhere in any of those guidance. That was um, kind of our own district initiative towards that. Um, but I, I don't know what ASHRAE is, and I, I don't know if Jack knows or, or Julie knows. Um, what ASHRAE is a national organization uh, that is for um, heating and ventilation, um, HVAC groups. Um, that come up with the standards. 
that they think for normal occupancy. And if you look in the ASHRAE guidance, you'll find in some places they talk about, you know, there's a difference between a K-12 school, uh, a doctor's office, a surgical suite. Um, so it all depends on the setting and they have different standards for different settings. The um, difficulty with um, the ASHRAE standards and most equipment uh, was installed at a time when the ASHRAE standards were different. And so one of the problems is all our motors and equipment is sized based on MERV 7s to 10s. And so once you increase the density of the filter so that you resist more air, um, the issue is while the standard is current, um, the equipment doesn't necessarily meet the, uh, have the ability to meet that ASHRAE standard. Julie, do you want to comment on that? I think that what you said would be accurate based upon a, an analysis of many of the school district's physical plants. A lot of them, um, based on their current systems, cannot tolerate a MERV level higher than eight, which is technically still considered acceptable for filtration purposes under the current climate with the understanding that it does um, filter out, you know, larger particles rather than the smaller particles, but the actual airflow is greater because the size of the particulate being excluded is small is bigger versus smaller. Um, I think every district needs to analyze its own system to determine what filters will work in the system based upon what is in place and that the safety is important and the functionality as as well as the fresh airflow is important as well. We have to be a, a little, you know, there, there is, from what I understand, NYSED is pushing for 17 mm per person. 17, uh, you said? Yes, which has no standard from anywhere. Uh, like uh, hospital um, ICUs, perhaps? No, I, ICUs use no return air. Oh, OK. I've seen 17 uh, somewhere, but not in any yeah. guidance or recommendations for. I think, I think he's talking about two different 17s, possibly. Oh. Right. No, no, actually, I got that from one of my, um, it, I got that from Dan Lim that uh, the, the teachers union was pushing for 17 CFM, not 15. The old code was 15 in a classroom, 20 in an office. Um, the confusion is with if you're talking about MERV 17 or 17 CFM. That's what I'm just doing. talking about the amount of fresh air whether it doesn't matter what filter you put on it. What the old code, what the codes used to say is until a couple of years ago, um, used to say that for a classroom, we would base it on 15 cubic feet of air per minute uh, per student. If you, and you based the number of students in a classroom, not on the number of actual students, but on the square footage of a room so if you had a 770 square foot classroom, it was designed for, for 30 students or so you would need 450 CFM of fresh air minimum for a classroom. Uh, for an office, let's say the superintendent's office, uh, you would need 20 on the old code uh, per person. If she has a desk in there and two other people can sit in there, you'd need 60. Typically, we would design for something like 100 because she might have visitors in there, but that's about normal. They changed the, the code. Now, the International Mechanical Code, which is what governs in New York State, lowered the amount of fresh air required in classrooms, offices, gyms, cafeterias to 10 CFM per person. So the amount of fresh air required in a room with 30 kids has gone from uh, 450 to 300. With 15 kids, in theory, you would only need 150 cubic feet of air per minute uh, of fresh air. Um, if you operate the units the way they were probably designed in your buildings, then you would have triple the amount of fresh air required by current code 
even what the teachers are asking for at 17, if you only have 15 kids in there, you're talking about 250 in round numbers and you're bringing in 450. So you're bringing in much more air than is required, even not required, but requested by the New York State United Teachers. Okay, um, at this time, I'd like to make a motion to enter into executive session for the purpose of legal advice. Can I have a second? Barbara? Yes, I'll second that. Okay, all in favor of executive session, aye. Oh, okay. I can't, I think I see everybody um, yep. opposed. Yep. Thanks, Michelle. Sorry, <laughs> Anyone opposed? The, uh, my my went out for a few minutes. That's okay, Michelle. I just couldn't see you. Um, all right. Uh, motion carries 7-0 to enter into executive session. Um, the community can please wait. If Sarah could send us a link, please. We'll be back shortly. Would you like me to stay here or that's up to you? Um, why don't I do this? I will, um, I will text you if, uh, why don't you go ahead and log off and I will text you, um, and it would okay. be the same link. Okay. 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 One, th one thing I, d uh, I mentioned just briefly, I'd like to say before you go into executive session, one thing we are doing in Warwick is all five buildings, the nurses offices and the isolation rooms will be getting UVC lights that disinfect the room when the bill, when the rooms are empty so that it completely disinfects all surfaces and the air in the room at night when the bill, or after the isolation room has been emptied of a sick kid. Uh, you can clean the room completely in 15 to 30 minutes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jack. Thank you, Scott, Welcome. very much. Um, I will create a the Google Meet and send it to you guys, but I'll have to keep this running in the background. So I will put things on mute and send you guys the exec. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Scott. Can the community please have some patience with us while we uh, just get some advice from our attorney? And we'll be back. Aaron Novak. Here. Michelle Kaiser? Here. Yu Kwan Lee? Here. I think okay, that's we're all back. We've now returned to public session. We're recording now, Sarah? Yes. Okay. Sarah, would you like to lead off on um, coming back into, into our executive session? We need to move forward with a plan. Would you like to give a statement? and open discussion up uh, where we're at, board members. Um, so I just want to uh, Go ahead, Sarah. So I'll, I'll just start by uh, saying that we very much appreciate um, the guidance of uh, the two individuals that came in, Scott and, I am drawing a complete blank. Jack. Jack, oh my gosh, Jack Eisenbach, that was terribly rude of me. Um, and they gave us uh, a lot of things to think about. Um, and what uh, became very evident to me as I listened to both of them speak is that we need to uh, update our plan a little bit. Um, so uh, one, because the filters are not in yet for the beginning of school, um, and we will need to modify that language to say that we are going to be working towards MERV 13. <coughs> Um, and he gave us several other possibilities of ways that we can move forward between uh, for right now uh, that would be up for board discussion, including putting in the MERV 8 filters that we do have in, on hand, uh, upgrading and upping our outside air, uh, uh, et cetera. So uh, at this time, I'd like to invite some board conversation about uh, how 
how, how the board thinks would be good, some good possible ways of moving forward. I do wanna say that this is a board meeting that is an, uh, an emergency board meeting, not because it's an emergency situation, but an emergency board meeting is a board meeting that gets called with less than 24 hours notice. And that's what makes it an emergency board meeting. Um, also, we are not taking questions from the chat or uh, nor will we be uh, reading through the chat as a part of this, uh, that those that occurs during our regular business meetings. Um, it is not that we don't wanna hear from the public. It's just that this is a specific meeting for a specific purpose of discussion of the board that is also open to the public for viewing. Um, so if you typed in questions and they are unanswered after this or, or please feel free to email uh, me after the meeting. All right, so is that? Okay, thank you, Sarah. Um, would any board member wanna lead off the discussion on where we need to move forward with? Or is it all me again? TJ, go ahead. So from the start, we said that we were going to have the MERV 13s train, swerve, and then that we were going to have them numerous times. They came to Sarah yesterday and stated that it would not be possible to have them for the opening of school, that we should have them sometime mid to end, mid to end of September, still uncertain. Um, so right now in our reopening plan, it does state that we will have them at the start. So our discussion, our meeting tonight had to be about going back in and just changing the contractual language of it and seeing how we want to move forward with it as a board. Thanks, TJ. I know um, different possibilities were discussed by Jack who joined us and um, Scott from Train and we do have available our MERV 8 filters to um, install into all of our, um, into all of the equipment. And now it is, a, it is a question of how much of air exchange is gonna go on, um, anywhere from what we're set at six times per hour to exchange the air up to 100% outside air. Um, and that is technical and we have some questions for Rob. I know there, there's there been some some things that we can't discuss in executive session. So I know, Sarah, you had a couple of our questions you, you wrote down to save for us. Um, can we get Rob out? out? Rob, you there? Oh, yay, Rob, thanks. <coughs> Sarah, did you happen to remember any of them? Or Julie? <laughs> So much has gone on. Sorry, guys. It's a lot that goes on through everything, but we did have some question about um, what percentage is six times an hour of outside air? 15%. That's only 15%. So can you give us um, some information on increasing the percentage and using the filtration system of exchanging air and, and what that does? Because we don't understand that. I would have to, uh, the air balancing is complicated. I would have to get uh, professional guidance on that. So you need to have a con consultation with train on how to adjust, on what levels to adjust to? It, depending on what kind of, how many air changes per hour we're aiming for, I would have to have a consultation with an Okay. That's Thank you for your honesty. I, I do appreciate that because there was different information presented from, from both of them about 100% error versus not 100% error. So board members, do we have any other questions for Rob? Can you please jump in here? Um, Rob, another thing to look into um, to keep the building at an acceptable humidity level so that we don't have condensation on pipes or floors or anything like that um, as part of your conversations can you talk about that with train or whoever it is you need to speak with to make sure that we stay at an acceptable humidity level to not cause other issues of course yes okay um, moving forward um, to the community one of the questions that that came up is perhaps not every um, vent could operate with a MERV 13 does anybody, um, we, we had some, we, we'd like to 
figure out what to do if there is a room that could not um, sustain a MERV 13 filter and could only sustain a MERV 8. If we want to move forward with a MERV 13 rating for our district, um, can we please look into more external filters that would increase our rating so that we could assure every, every classroom um, carried that level? Yes, absolutely. So as, as we get the report back from train and I, it, to my understanding, they have not reached a room yet that that is not MERV 13 upgradable. Right. Um, but as soon as we, if we get information that says that, uh, I, we will start a tally list to see um, and bring yeah. that. Forward. As a backup plan, because it was the first that um, I know we had heard that there was perhaps a chance, a, any, a, a specific room or two may not meet that. We don't want one to have a MERV 8 and everything else have 13. Um, so we've, we've already added external filters in some of the new office spaces. Um, we'll just move forward with that. Is the board okay with that direction? Everybody, well, yes? Looking, looking into it? Um, looking into it and seeing how many there are and then coming back to us with an idea of what it would be. Okay. But yes. that keeping the philosophy that MERV 13, as long as it's not an overwhelming amount should be in in the classrooms but dependent on cost okay um we need to move forward with because there is you, we would have a question of if we were not ready to open the building um is everybody on the board confident that we can amend our plan and still open as as stated for next Tuesday with a MERV-8 filter and an increased air exchange. Any yes, discussion? Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Uh, okay. I think we learned a lot from Jack. Uh, you know, the, the whole idea about the exchange, the not having the air circulate, that makes total sense. Uh, it's been studied already. Uh, that with the MERV-8 filters, with all the other safety precautions that Sarah and her team have put in place, I, I have no doubt yeah, that school opening can go forward. Right. And once again, to the community, we do this for transparency. I don't think anybody would want to find out. We just said it was okay to not have MER 13 filters and not included you in it. Sorry for the alarm, but because of the time sensitivity of the week, with staff already in the building, we had to have a meeting and we can only call it an emergency if it's less than 24 hours. Okay, just to add to my comment to the community, uh, the filters are coming. So it's, yes. not that, it's not that we're putting this aside. It, it's, it's on order, it's on paper, everything mm -hmm. is set to go. We're having distribution, delivery issues, manufacturing issues, and the whole country is having that. So that is why uh, I just want everybody to know that they're coming. Okay. Right. Just, just an update of our plan until they come in. Um, the state does require if we change anything that it, it gets updated. It's a living document. Any board member have anything else to bring up or announce or speak? I, I just uh, agree with you, Vaughn. I think we can open safely. We're meeting every requirement to do that. Um, the MERV 13 was on top of being compliant with all the requirements to open, and I think we can safely do that um, going forward. Okay. I, I agree, as long as we had MERV 8 filters there and it wasn't just an open air. Um, MERV 8 at least gives us where we were last year, um, puts us back to where we were. Anybody else? Michelle, you have anything to say to the community? No, I'll go I'm around. Just in agreement. I think I think we can um, continue with you know opening the school. Sorry, right. my internet is going in and out. Um, okay. Yeah, I think Jack gave us a lot of um, great information. So you know he he sh showed us that even without the MER thirteen, we're still going above and beyond. Right. Matt, do you have anything to add? I think 
you for everybody's patience tonight. Um, you know, there's a lot of issues going into this opening of the school. And we're following every expert guideline and everything we could possibly do. And uh, I think we're ready to go. You keep your fingers crossed. Okay. Thank you. Barbara? No, I'm just echoing everybody's sentiments. Just want to keep everybody informed. You know, we don't want to we don't want to hide anything clear and transparent. Um, but yes, getting school open and everybody's safety is really top priority. TJ. Um, Sarah, for anybody that anybody that has any issues, can you just remind them that if they have any changes in how they're feeling about the safety of a child or anything like that for them to be able to, for them to reach out. Absolutely. So um, we're always here for parent questions um, or concerns and um, we'll continue to, uh, to, to do that. Um, and I understand that this uh, Discussion has been long, and, and, and as Sue said, it was very surprising. And, and you know, I, some people were on, on the fence. And um, if this sways you one way or another, we will certainly uh, work with you. So, thank you, Sarah. I think it's important if somebody um, was uncomfortable with it that we accommodate the individual need. Um, okay. Nobody expected if, this to happen at the end of the day. No, you know, we all right. went into this wholeheartedly thinking and you know being told that we were going to be able to have these filters it was going to be in it wasn't going to be a problem you know sarah the admin staff everybody we all it wasn't a thought we were told it was going to happen it wasn't a problem reassured numerous times and then boom yesterday the bomb was dropped to admin and to us that yeah by the way guys we're not gonna be able to do that so okay. um as i've said many times over the last couple of years um Safety is always our number one concern, um, right up there with education. They need, we need to know, everybody that sends their children to school needs to know they're safe, um, as well as educated. So this is just another step in making sure everybody's going to be safe. I thank everybody for their time. I think we can move forward to um, our next meeting is scheduled for September 14th at 7 p.m. Um, I think via Zoom if the governor extends his executive order and we will be able to take a motion to adjourn at this point. And again, thank you to the community for all of their patience. Sometimes in uh, this type of thing, we have to do this in public to, to talk it through. And um, thank you for the patience. Can I have that motion to adjourn, please? I make the motion. Aaron, you wanna second that? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 7 0. Thank you, everybody. All of you have a great night. Uh, the kids, everybody's looking forward to seeing them that are attending in person on Tuesday. And thank you to our staff for all of their hard work, as always. Julie, thanks for joining us, as always. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.